first lesson on systems of measurement. There are three systems of measurements of interest in pharmacy practice, and we're going to be looking at three of them. They're namely apothecary system, the avoir de bois system, and the metric system. Let's look at an overview of the three systems right now. Okay, so let's look at the apothecary system now. This system uses measurements of weight and volume, and the basic unit of the measurement for weight would be the grain, and the basic unit for the volume would be the minim. And this is used by pharmacists and physicians in, um, in olden days um, to be able to calculate drug amounts. We hardly use these, this system to do 
calculations in pharmacy practice, but it is still very useful for us to know about them. The apothecary system of measurements, as I said before, has both measurements for liquid or fluids and for weight. And you will notice here that the system of measurement for fluid has things that we are very familiar with, like ounces and quarts and gallon, right? But as I said before, the unit for fluid measurements would be minim, and the unit for weight measurement would be grain. And of course, we would have been familiar with things like pounds and ounces. The only thing we will not be very familiar with would be drum and minim, but definitely pints, quarts, gallons, pounds, pounds are very familiar to us. Let us see if we can do a calculation involving the apothecary system. Now the example says, how many 1 in 400 grain tablets of nitroglycerin can a manufacturer prepare from a quantity of a nitroglycerin mixture that contains 1 8th ounce of a drug? Now, this is um, allowing us to convert from ounces to grains or from grains to ounces, however you want to do so. Um, first of all, we have to see if there is a relationship between the ounce and the grain. I brought up this conversion um, sheet here for us to look at. We see that 20 grains is equal to one scruple. We don't need that because scruple is not one of the units that we are working with. What we are working with is ounces and here we have ounces here. One ounce is equivalent to 480 grains, also equal to 8 drums. But we're not working with drums, we're working with grains. So that's the first thing I would write down. That 1 ounce is equal to 480 grains. So we got that out of the way. That's our conversion. I don't like working with fractions, so therefore I am going to change 1 over 400 grains to decimal and that works out to be 0 0.0025 grains and I also want to change the 1 8th ounce to decimal and that 0 0.125 ounces. Okay, now what is this question asking us? The question is asking us to determine the total number of tablets that contain 1 over 400 or 0 0.0025 grains of nitroglycerin, given that the manufacturer has a mixture that he's going to use to make this type of these types of tablets with 1 eighth ounce of nitroglycerin in there. So we have to write down a statement. The first statement we have to write is that one tablet will contain 0 0.0025 grains of the drug. And the drug in this case is nitroglycerin. What is it that we have? We have 0 0.125 ounces of nitroglycerin. And this nitroglycerin is what we are going to use to make the tablets. Now, we can't just do a straight multiplication because we have to make sure that the units are the same. So we need to change the ounces to grains because we are dealing with grains in each tablet. So it makes no sense to change the grains to ounces. I mean, you can, but it just makes calculation much easier to change the ounces to grains since we are working with tablets that has quotations in grains. So, because we already know this conversion here, we are going to say since one ounce 
is equivalent to 480 grains, therefore, 0 0.125 ounces will be equivalent to X. And X would be, this is 0 0.125 ounces times 480 grains divided by one ounce. And X is going to give us 60 grains. Okay, so since the total mixture has 0 0.125 ounces of drug, which is the same as we just calculated to be 60 grains of the drug, and we also know that one tablet will contain 0 0.0025 grains of the drug, then we can now determine how many tablets we can get from the 0 0.125 ounces or how many tablets we can get from 60 grains. So if one tablet will contain 0 0.0025 grains of drug, then X tablets will definitely be made from 60 grains of drug. Remember, the 60 grains is really the drug in the mixture that the manufacturer has. Right? So the drug is in this mixture, and the amount of nitroglycerin in that mixture is 60 grains. And if one tablet will contain 0 0.0025 grains, then we can determine how many tablets can come from 60 grains. So X will be equal to 60 grains times one tab divided by 0 0.0025 grains, and that is going to end up with 24,000 tablets. So it means then that if I have 1 8 ounce of nitroglycerin, and I want to make tablets that where each tablet contains 1 over 400 grains of nitroglycerin, I can get 24,000 tablets from my half ounce of drug. So let's look at the avoir de poids system. The avoir de poids system consists of measurements of weight only. Unlike the apothecary system, it has no measurements for volume or length. It consists of units such as pounds and ounces and grains. Okay. So the basic unit of weight in this system is a grain. So remember the avoir de poids system, unlike the metric system that has volume, length, and weight, and the apothecary system that has volume and weight, this only has measurements for weight, and the unit, basic unit of weight is a grain, very similar to the apothecary system. Kindly note that the avoir de poids system which has measurements for weight, will have similar units as the apothecary system. So you notice that it has grains, it also has ounces. Now, the difference between the apothecary system and the avoir de poids system is the amounts, the conversion within the system. So for example, 480 grains is equal to one ounce in the apothecary system. But when you look at the avoir de poids system, it has 437.5 grains to one ounce. Also in the apothecary system, you have 12 ounces that makes up the pound. That's in the apothecary system. But in the avoir de poids system, 16 ounces make one pound. So therefore, you can't just convert straight. You are going to have to find a common unit in both system and convert to that unit first before converting to the other system. And I will give you some examples with that shortly. But just remember that we don't convert, say, one pound in the avoir de poids system to the apothecary system. So even though both systems will have 
similar units, grains, ounce, and pound, that's in both systems, the Avoidable and the Apothecary system, there are some differences. And these are very important because these differences are very, very significant. So, for example, if you are going to be comparing the amount of grains in one system that's equivalent to one ounce, you're going to find that in the apothecary system, 480 grains is equivalent to one ounce. But when you look in the avoir de poids system, 437.5 grains is equivalent to one ounce. So both are different in that regard. And therefore, you cannot straight convert one ounce in the avoir de poids system to say one pound in the apothecary system because the quantity of the units are different. Similarly, another difference would be that 16 ounces, so 16 ounces in the apothecary system is going to be equivalent to one pound. But when we look here in the apothec, in the avoir de poids system, excuse me, 16 ounces is equivalent to one pound. So again, you cannot convert from ounces in the avoir de poids system to pounds in the apothecary system because the amount of grains are different. The amount of ounces are different. Okay? One point to note, however, is that the avoir de poids system is what we use to convert the imperial system to metric. So, for example, one ounce is equivalent to 28.35 grains in and uh, grams sorry and that's in the metric system and if we are converting pounds to kilograms one kilogram is equivalent to 2.2 pounds you may see in some textbooks 2.21 pound that won't give you any significant difference also 454 grams is equivalent to one pound so if you're going to supermarket and you pick up, say, a pound of butter, you're going to see 454 grams. So we use this system even to this very day. So it's very important that we learn these systems. So let's look at an example here. How many pounds, and this is avoir de poids pounds, of lactose powder is needed to prepare 500 tablets if each tablet con should contain 7.75? grains of lactose. So the first thing we need to do is to write down what is given. We are given that one tablet will contain 7.7 .7 grains of lactose. Okay, And we want to find out how many tablets sorry, we are, we are trying to find out um, how many grains of lactose will 500 tablets contain? So we don't know what the amount of grains of lactose will be from these 500 tablets. So quick cross multiply 500 tablets times 7.7 .7 grains divided by one tablet. And that is going to give us 3,850 grains um, of lactose. So that means if I have 500 tablets, I'm going to require 3,850 grains of lactose. Since 500 tablets will require 3,850 grains of lactose, the question is asking you then, what is that equivalent to in pounds? So you have 3,850 grains of lactose that is required. What is that in pounds? So you have to look at the conversion. So let's look at the table here. We have a lot of conversions, but we have to choose one that is relevant to the question or what the question is asking for. So here we have grains to ounces. Didn't ask for ounces, it asked for pounds. So we have to go back and look and see what's the relationship between pounds 
and grains. So here we have 16 ounces equal to 70,000 grains, which is the same thing as one pound. So there, right away, we know that the conversion we need is 7,000 grains is equivalent to one pound. And I'm going to write LB for pounds here. So we want to find out what 3,850 grains, what is that equivalent to in terms of pounds. So therefore... 3,850 grains then will be equivalent to x. And x is now going to be 3,850 grains times 1 pound divided by 7,000 grains. And x is going to give you 0 0.55 pounds. So about half a pound or so, a little bit over half of a pound, would be equivalent to the amount of lactose that would be needed to make 500 tablets. Let's look at the metric system. Most of us are familiar with the metric system because it's widely used and accepted around the world. It's easier to use because it's based on multiples of 10 and it has a wide range of standard units. But the units that we are going to cover are units for distance or length, where the basic unit is the meter, volume, where the basic unit is the milliliter, and mass or weight, where the basic unit is going to be grams. This is just really um, a recap for you because you would have done this already. This is, these are the units that are used for length, weight, and volume. Okay, so let's look at this example. How many grams of lactose powder is needed to prepare 500 tablets if each tablet should contain 450 milligrams of lactose? So the first thing we are going to do is to look at the conversion that would be needed here. So of course, the final answer will be needed, will be in grams, and what you have to work with is milligrams. So clearly, you're going to be convert doing some relationship between grams and milligrams. And that relationship, we see it right here, that um, 1,000 milligrams is equivalent to 1 gram. Okay, so let's write that down. 1 gram is equivalent to 1,000 milligrams. The question further stated that one tablet will contain... 450 milligrams of lactose okay but you want to find out how many milligrams of lactose will 500 tablets contain and of course we're going to cross multiply so x is going to be 500 tabs times 450 milligrams divided by one tablet and the answer we got would have been 225,000 milligrams. The question however asked for grams and not milligrams so you're going to have to convert this to grams. Of course we know the conversion which is one gram is equivalent to 1,000 milligrams Therefore, X grams will be equivalent to 225,000 milligrams. Cross multiply, 225 milligrams, 225,000 milligrams times 1 gram divided by 1,000. And that is going to be 225 grams. So you need, you need 225 grams of lactose to make 500 tablets. So let's see how we will now convert between systems. We know how to do conversion within systems. Let's do converting from one system to the next. When you're converting between systems, it's very, very important to understand the units that you're calculating. So while knowing the different units in the system of measurement is important, the real purpose behind learning these systems is so that you are able to use the correct measurement units to calculate length, mass, or volume of different things used in pharmacy practice. 
In practice, it is often necessary to convert one unit measurement to another unit measurement. And there are times when you can't do a straight conversion. You're going to have to convert to one unit first, and then from that unit to the unit you require. Now, this is a sheet that has the different systems of conversions. You have here general conversions for mass and weight and for liquid capacity. And this here is the imperial system that we are sort of used to. We, we still encounter them, fluid ounces to pints and gallons and quarts, etc. Here you have mass and weights of um, some of these imperial system to um, metric system. And these are the systems that we use from um, when we are converting imperial to metric. We do not use apothecary system, for example, to um, convert, say, pounds to kilograms. What we use is the avoir de poids system. And you will be familiar with the fact that one kilogram is equivalent to 2.2 pounds. We also have here um, both systems, as I said before, the apothecary and the avoir de poids system on this sheet. I do not have the metric system here, but what I do have, I have conversion from the apoth um, apothecary or imperial system in terms of liquid measure to metric. So here I have the apothecary system volume conversion in metric for the US and the apothecary system volume conversion Met to metric system in the UK. So again, it depends on the jurisdiction that you are in. You will notice that fluid ounces in the US, when you convert it to metric, is 29.573 mils, whilst that in the UK system is 28.412. So it's very important to qualify what system you are using or what which country, whether it be UK or US, when you are converting from the apothecary system of measure to the um, metric system. And this is really talking to systems, volumetric systems or volumetric conversions, I should say. And then I also have useful household measures, which are here, like teaspoons, tablespoons, full, cupful, etc. Please note that this system of measurement conversion sheet is also found on your Padlet wall under Unit 2 Resources. How do we convert between avoir de poids and apothecary systems? As I said before, both systems have pounds, ounces, and grains that are similar. However, the quantity of each of these units when you're converting, say, to grains to pounds are different, so you can't do a straight conversion. The rule of thumb is if you're converting from avoir de poids to apothecary system, you convert to the grain first because the grain is common to both systems. So you convert to grains first and then from grain to whatever unit you desire to convert. So, for example, if you're converting from a pound in the avoir de poids system to drum in the apothecary system, you convert that pound in the avoir de poids system to grains first and then from grains to the drum. And I'll show you an example. Okay, so we have one last question to illustrate converting from one system to the other. Now it's quite simple as long as we know the conversions for avoir de poids to metric and apothecary to metric. Once it is stated, whether it is avoir de poids or apothecary, and really for the avoir de poids, you will know what systems you will be working with because this is all that there is to that system. And we are converting pounds to kilograms most of the time. All right? So, this is the system that we will most likely be working with when we're converting from the avoir de poids system to the metric system.
When it comes to the apothecary system, you have two systems of measurement we have for weight and we have for volume. Generally speaking, we tend to convert mostly volume apothecary unit of measure to metric system. So when we are doing that, we have to qualify whether or not it is a UK measurement or it is a US measurement, which I had explained earlier. So let's look at this question. How many grains of a chemical are left in a one ounce avoirdupois bottle after seven drums are dispensed from it? This is seven in Roman numerals. Of course, you would have known this from your previous mathematics classes from primary and high school. So this is just revision for you. I always like to um, illustrate what the question is asking. So this is my one ounce um, bottle. And I'm now assuming that this one ounce bottle will have one ounce of the chemical in there. And based on the question, the question says, from this one ounce chemical, what was dispensed from it or what was taken from it is seven drum of the chemical. So they want to know, having done that, how much of the chemical is left? Right? How much of it is left? And they want to know how much of it is left. They want to know how much of that is left in grains. So straight away, we know that we are working with the avoir de poids ounce, the apothecary drum, because um, avoir de poids does not have drum, and of course grain, which is common to both systems. You cannot straight away convert the ounces to drum since we know that there's drum in the apothecary system. And when we look here, say you're going to do that, you're tempted to do that, right? So you're tempted to say, okay, it's one ounce. You don't bother to think that it is an avoir de poids ounce. You just see ounce, see draw, and be tempted to say, okay, let me look over here and see how many drums make the ounce. I find here that eight drums make one ounce, so I'll just convert this to eight drums then. Since seven um, drums will be removed from it, then it is going to be left with one drum, and then... I'll just look and say, since it's asking for grains, that 60 grains is equivalent to one drum. So this then clearly would be 60 grains. My apologies for the little doggies outside. But we can't do that because we are dealing with avoir de poids ounce. Okay? So it means then that we are going to have to convert the ounces in avoir de poids to grains. So the ounce will have to convert it to grains. And we also have to convert the drum also to grains. Because the grain is the common unit in both systems. Drum is not the same. You can convert drum straight to ounces. And the ounces of the avoir de poids is different from the owns in the av apothecary system, right? Here it is. 437.5 grains is equivalent to one ounce in the avoir de poids, while 480 grains is equivalent to one ounce in the apothecary. So we can't do a straight conversion. So we have to convert both of um, the owns and the drum to grains. So... Because we know that 437.5 grains is equivalent to one ounce in the avoir de poids system, we know then if we draw back our one ounce bottle, we know that this is the same thing as 437.5 grains. So 437.5 grains are of chemical is in this bottle. We also know that... Um, 
seven drums we know that well we know that eight drums one drum is equivalent to 60 grains so therefore seven drums will be equal to six times 60 times seven which is going to give you 420 grains so we know then that from this 437.5 grains seven drum was dispensed or removed from it and this seven drum is equivalent to 420 grains so it simply means then that if we should now convert everything to grains we know that 437.5 grains of the chemical is contained in the bottle and from that 437.5 grains 420 grains of chemical was removed or were removed so therefore the amount that is left in the bottle would be 437.5 grains minus 420 grains which will give us and a total of 17.5 grains of chemical left okay so I hope you understand that we can't just do a straight we can't just convert the, dr the drums or the ounces to drums and subtract seven drums from eight drums because what we will have is 60 drums that will be left and 60 drums would be much more it would be significantly more than 17.5 grains which would have been incorrect so you if once you're working with avoir de pot and apothecary you convert the units to grains first we have come to the end of the lesson and so it's now your turn to do your work to do your practicing you have your textbook you know the chapter in which this is covered and you also have your tutorial which is also on the padlet wall so what i want for you to do is to put yourself in groups of three so this is where you're going to be working in groups now um, you can determine how you're going to up, um, put yourselves in groups if you have the whatsapp group you can have that discussion there once you have three groups i want three groups okay once you have three groups the, there's a group activity um, on the padlet wall um choose a question based on the group number that you have so you're going to have three groups group one group two group three and you're going to randomly assign group numbers and these group numbers are going to be associated with a particular question and you're all going to do in the group you're going to work on these questions type them up and then you're going to have one person from the group to upload it on the upload group activity tab all right so get into groups of three complete the activity sheet by using the conversion shared on the padlet wall use the link below to access the activity sheet once completed upload on the padlet wall for marking under the upload group activity tab all right thank you so very much and happy working mm -hmm.